This fast graph plotting the operating earnings per share of Blackstone Inc., one of the largest alternative investment firms in the country. It's one of the largest asset management and custodian banks in the world with a market cap of $110 billion. What you see here by this graph clearly is the company is very inconsistent in terms of operating earnings. It's not uncommon for the company to show losses, and it's not uncommon for the company to show huge drops in earnings. When I put dividends with the dividend payout ratio on the graph, another thing dividend growth investors might have to look out for is the fact that there are times when the company pays over 100% of their profits in dividends and their payout ratios are normally very high. And also look how inconsistent the dividend has been cut numerous times over this time frame. Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of Fast Graphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool, a.k.a. Mr. Valuation. Today, I'm going to cover Blackstone Group, one of the largest asset managers in the country in alternative investments. And frankly, if I wasn't asked by subscribers to cover this, I would not have looked at this. So, But that's good. I do want to show you a company that I'm personally not interested in, but you can make up your mind for yourself. So let's go ahead and go into Fast Graphs and look at it. And I've kind of been putting the graph together here for you. Number one is I've shown adjusted operating earnings and then the dividend payout ratio. So when I go ahead and put the dividends, you know, on top of the graph, like I like to do with Fast Graphs, you can see that the company has a very erratic history of dividends. If I look at their past performance, you can see that they have cut their dividends on several occasions. So it's very, very inconsistent. Now, the company, when I put weekly closing stock prices on the graph, as you can see here by the black line, you can see that generally where the company's profits have gone, the company's stock price has gone. And coming out of you know 2021, they had a fabulous year. They had earnings growth of 80% from 265 to 467. But then that growth was expected to slow down dramatically. You know, the investors got kind of irrationally exuberant and ran the P.E. ratio up to over 30 times earnings. And since that time, the stock has been in a free fall drop, you will. But I still would consider this stock technically overvalued. Now, looking to the future for this company, if I go into the forecasting calculators, there are a lot of analysts following the company. There's 16 analysts following the company, but it does drop down to nine by 2024. And the analysts for 2022, the estimates for 2022, they went from 530, then they increased to 570, then they dropped to 510, and now they're currently estimating $5.14. I think that just shows you how kind of schizophrenic the analysts are when trying to analyze this company. When you check the analyst scorecard, you discover they miss estimates on the one-year forecast half the time and on the two-year forecast over half the time. And, and when they miss, they often miss by large amounts. So what I can ascertain here is that this company is very hard to analyze because of the erratic, inconsistent, you know, almost cyclicality nature of their business. And so I don't put much credence in these estimates here going out one and two years. They could be close. They could be right. But again, the company is very, very hard to estimate. Analysts are expecting a long-term growth rate of over 13%. But let's go ahead and check on some things that, you know, other firms are saying. Let's kind of talk about Morningstar. In the Morningstar current report, and I'm going to read from it and quote, during the last past five years, and they put in parentheses 10 years, the company has accounted for 29% of the industry's private debt segment, funding 16% of new commitments for real estate and real estate funds. 5% of the capital being raised for private equity slash venture funds and 13% of fundraising in the other alternatives category. So you can see they're a major player. As a result, Blackstone accounted for 12% of new commitments to alternative products during 2017 to 2021. On top of that, the firm gathered as much capital during the past 10 years as its next two largest standalone competitors, Apollo Group and KKR, in the alternative asset management segment. Now, I think it's kind of interesting to go ahead and, if you will, take a look at Apollo. So I'm going to take a look at Apollo real quick. When you look at Apollo Global Management, you can see a similar characteristic as we saw with Blackstone. The company is much smaller at about $41 billion compared to $110 billion. It's also very erratic, and also they have a dividend record. So these companies, I'm not sure, are 
really, you know, the kind of company that I'm looking for because I'm looking for consistent dividend growth stocks and very predictable stocks. And the same about KKR. So what we have here, this is an industry that's very difficult to invest in. There are times when you can make a great deal of money. But what I want to point out is, you know, when we look at it statistically, we got a 5.57% dividend yield. It is A plus rated, and I'm not really sure why it gets that rating. The company's stock price has been in a free fall this year, but that's really a function of it being massively overvalued, in my opinion, where the market got really excited about an 80% growth, even though common sense would suggest that really wasn't a sustainable growth rate. And then as estimates come down for only 8% this year, that took these lofty valuations and brought them back into you know, reality. Plus, we're going into an economic, you know, very scary times here. According to Zach's investment research, Zach has a couple of negatives about the stock that I think are worth pointing out. One is they say, unlike other companies in the same space, Blackstone's capital deployment are a direct function of its earnings generated. So given a volatile trend in its quarterly earnings over the last several quarters, its dividend might not be dependable. So if you're looking at a 5.57% dividend yield, you know, there is a risk that that is that yield will disappear on you. And then they also go on to say, although it has a share repurchase place and plan, chances of Blackstone sustaining its current capital deployment activities are dim. So, you know, there's really a massive amount of unpredictability here. Now, as I go through other metrics like I like to do, if I look at operating cash flow, there's so many times where they have negative operating cash flow that, again, it's not the kind of company that I personally am looking to invest in. And of course, free cash flow does look a little better, but they often pay out 100% of their free cash flow. So, you know, bottom line is, I do want to be clear, I don't know a great deal about this company because it's not the kind of company that I would personally invest in. But since I was asked to look at it, I thought I'd give you my, you know, candid view of the company. And, you know, it's dealing in investments that are unpredictable. Now, they have had success in the past. When you look at their sales, you know, again, you can see that their sales growth has not really been that strong. It's been very inconsistent. There are times when sales growth, you know, is very, very high, like back in 2017. And in 2021, the sales growth has been real high, which explains this, you know, enthusiasm for the stock here recently. But the problem is when you're only looking at stock prices, and let's go ahead and go into a charting program. Let's go into Google Finance. And I want to make this point about fast graphs. If you're looking at, you know, just the stock price of a company and that's all you have to look at, you see, you know, rises and falls and you see this big jump in price. And if you were looking at that, you could say, oh, this was, you know, pretty interesting company here. But the problem is without the perspective of earnings attached to that or cash flows attached to that, then you really don't, you know, get a real perspective of what the company looks like. That's why I think FastGraphs is such an important investor tool and should be in the portfolio of every and in, every investor who owns stocks. You know, if you don't own FastGraphs, I think you're really at a disadvantage because it's the only one that really gives you the perspective of the company's fundamentals and then how the companies have been performing with those fundamentals in contrast to how the market is valuing the stock. And you can clearly see periods of high valuation and, you know, best times to buy and best times to sell. But my problem with this company is that it's very, very inconsistent. It's very, very difficult to come up with what I would call a real analysis. If I look at their cash flow forecast, operating cash flow, and that's so important to a dividend investor, the analysts have got it wrong literally 100% of the time since 2015. So, you know, when I'm looking at the forecasting calculator for cash flow, even though they're expecting a big number up here, I'm not sure I'd put much credence in that. You know, so in other words, very, very difficult to analyze, very unpredictable. Uh, it's not the kind of company that I personally would invest in. And I think the key is here that Fast Graphs really gives you that perspective if you understand what you're looking at and how to look at it very clearly. So Blackstone is a company I was asked to look at. I'm not sure I would be too interested in investing in Blackstone, it does show a high dividend yield. And if I do look at long-term performance of the company, it has outperformed the market and it has paid significantly more dividend income than the market, despite the dividend cuts, et cetera. But again, you know, it really depends on what, as an investor, whether you're willing to, you know, take that. Like you, if you go into other research sites, 
you're going to get like, we'll go into seeking alpha here. And, you know, we'll, you know, you get the same opinion that I'm showing Blackstone alternative asset manager experiencing alternative results, you know, telling you to buy other ones, you know, and, and is Blackstone a good long term investment asking the question. So, you know, it's really an iffy stock. If you had the temperament to hang on over the real long term, it could be a good investment. If you're looking for dividend income and you want to see a consistent increase in dividend income that you would get from an aristocrat or a dividend champion or even a contender, I don't think Blackstone, you know, foots the bill. But it is an interesting company. It does have periods of time where you can make money. But to me, it's the kind of company I'd have to watch too closely and spend way too much of my time in, in investing resources on for me to be an owner. So I'm not a fan, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't be. I ask you to do your own due diligence and, you know, see what you like. And again, it's one that was, I was asked to cover and the only reason I did cover it. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival, aka Mr. Valuation. I want to thank you for watching the video. I look forward to providing some new videos for you in the very near future. And by the way, if you like this video, give me a like and subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell and um, you might want to take a closer look at Fast Graphs as well because it's really, as you can see here, a tool that can really help guide you in terms of making your investment decisions long term. Thanks everybody for watching.